from Carolyn Stone. Come on, give her a hand. Carolyn. Give her a hand. Keep it going. Almost a few more seconds. Here she comes. Hi everybody, how you doing? Uh, I just wanted to give a little uh, housekeeping thing here. Everybody was very considerate to tell me uh, that I've got the, the tag on the scarf. Um, but I, I like the scarf and uh, I can't afford it, so uh, tomorrow it's, it's going back. So. <laughs> So, uh, you know, thanks to all the, all the family and, and friends that came out tonight to support us in our our beginnings here, and uh, all, the, all these guys that were great. Uh, it's, 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 it's really appreciated, and you know, I I, I thought I, I I hoped that I was going to have a lot of people here to support me, and uh, that that didn't happen. So, uh, so, yeah. Everybody keep drinking, okay? Everybody keep drinking. So, the fact that I didn't have, uh, you know, my posse out here tonight, I, I think it had something to do with the orders of protection. So, uh, I work in public relations. I help people with their reputation. Some people's reputations are pretty bad, they need a lot of help. And uh, recently I got a new client, and it's the, it's the Gilgo Beach serial murderer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, needs a lot of work. And I thought, you know, this is really going to be the biggest challenge of my public relations career. It's going to be hard, hard lifting here, you know. But the very first phone call I made, I booked him on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> that got me really pumped. I was really pumped. So I said, I'm going to get him a dancing partner. And I did. And I got Ghislaine Maxwell. <laughs> I have other uh, PR clients. There's a... Uh, there's one guy that I always promote him as being a New York City small business owner. And uh, he owns one third of a strip joint in Coney Island. <laughs> I got another, another client and I promote him as being a, a consultant for short term, high risk, Investments. He's a bookie. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I have an ex-husband in my past, and uh, he was Greek. He was from Greece, so he spoke Greek all the time. And you know, they say he don't understand anything he's saying, talking Greek. But there was something I understood all the time when he said it. I think he'd say my name, and then he would say. Queen Heart. It was like so sweet, like Queen Heart, Queen Heart. I could hear him talking to his, his buddies. And I really, you know, just got me right here. <laughs> then we divorced. We divorced, and uh, an ugly divorce. And um, that Queen Heart thing that I love so much, <laughs> I wasn't hearing that right. He was saying Green Card. <laughs> So, so if, uh, if, if you know about the Greeks, or Greeks of a certain age from, from Greece, they're very big with the dowries, so the girl gets married and the, the bride's family basically like buys the husband, you know, they give him a, a house or a diner or something like that. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. He, he expected this. So, uh, it's getting closer to our wedding day, and, uh, you know, he's asking, like, you know, my father, like, what are you, what are you giving me to take your daughter off your hands? So, my father took him out to the garage, 
and shows him in the garage and there's floor to ceiling floor to ceiling cases and cases and cases of empty Budweiser bottles so my then fiance says what's what's this what, what what what's this and my father says to him do the math son those bottles are a nickel apiece <laughs> when I lived in Manhattan I had a uh, kind of traumatic I had my apartment robbed they took everything Stanley heirlooms they stole everything and uh, I told my family, I said, I, I know who did it. I know who did it. it was that, that dirtbag superintendent. And they said, how do you, how do you know it was him? I, we, we know you hate him, but how do you know it was him? And I said, well, when I came into my apartment, I could smell his B.O. like all over the place. And I could see his dirty boot footprints throughout my carpet. No, I don't know. And I said, the next day when I saw him in the lobby, he looked fabulous wearing my favorite dangling earrings. <laughs> I'm one of five kids. I have nine nieces and nephews. And nobody, I'm resentful. Nobody's ever asked me to be a godmother for any of these kids. Never, never for this. It really bothered me. I, I asked one of my sisters, I said, well, you know, like, what, what, what's that about? You know. And she said, well, Carolyn, the last time you, you, you babysat for my little Emily, I had tracked you down at the bowling alley bar. <laughs> and I was like, you're holding that against me? <laughs> it was Tequila Tuesday. <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah, got it, got it. And Emily was throwing up all night long. <laughs> So, I, if, if I'm honest, I have to say, you know, when I had my reckless youth, I, I drank, you know, I drank a lot, <laughs> and uh, I used to, I used to go to the bars and get pretty polluted, and and when I did this, I, I noticed that uh, the guys will, will try to pick me up, you know. And I kind of just started to like take that for granted. <laughs> and uh, until one night at closing time, I'm I'm totally polluted. And just none of the guys are, are hitting on me. Closing time. I remember I was out there in, in the parking lot and uh, I'm saying, guys. I'm wasted here. I'm wasted here. <laughs> Come back. Where are you going? I'm wasted. But they just, you know, they took off. But luckily, a bakery truck went by. And the guy looked out at me and he said, Hey, girly, you want a little roll for breakfast? <laughs> wasn't, wasn't a complete loss. <laughs> So, sooner or later, you know, the inevitable was going to happen. My family's going to have an intervention for my drinking. And you know how these things are, they, you know, they sit around in a circle and they all like talk to you very sincerely. So my father sits opposite me and he takes my hands, looks into my eyes, and he says, Carol, Carol, you, 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 you really need to stop drinking. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, my mother has to pipe up. And she's like, listen to your father. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You've been great. Finishing her act on the sound of vomit. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> very funny. <laughs>